السلام علیکم سر جی آ جی ہاں جی السلام ٹیک یور سیٹ تھینک یو سر Uh, to begin with, we have four people and you can introduce yourself for all of us. Uh, sir, my name is Zain Ali Raza. I belong to Peshawar. I did my O-levels and A-levels from Edwards School and Edwards College in Peshawar. Uh, later, I moved to Islamabad from where I graduated with a degree in Civil Engineering from uh, NUST, Islamabad. Uh, sir, uh, thereafter, I worked briefly with a consultancy firm in Peshawar, during which time I sat for the CSS exam. in 2015 but unfortunately i was unsuccessful so finally in 2017 i joined the provincial civil service and i had the honor of securing the top position in the province uh, currently i'm working as assistant commissioner in takhbai uh, tehsil of district mardan and uh, in my spare time uh, i enjoy playing sports mostly golf and swimming so you are serving in takhbai as assistant commissioner yes sir can you give us the profile of district uh, profile of your subdivision takhbai sir uh, takhbai is a rural tehsil of district mardan uh, overall if we look at takhbai there is a lot of agricultural potential over there uh, mostly tobacco uh, wheat uh, mustard uh, mustard oil and oranges these are the main uh, agricultural outputs of that area uh, also a significant factor of takhbai is that uh, it is known for its archaeological sites at seri balol and takhbai uh, which hosts the most well preserved buddhist monastery um, uh, the population is around um, 80 uh, 1.2 million uh, sorry 0.12 million so so that is about it Zero point one two million, sir. Around uh, just over uh, one lakh. How many union consulate has got? Sir, fifty two. And how many MPs come from that area? Uh, from Takhbai, sir. Uh, sir, two and one uh, federal minister for state. Minister. They are from Takhbai. They sail out to Shah uh, Mardan. Yes, sir. From Takhbai. No, the the the. What is the population uh, division for this uh, seat of uh, member of parliament? Uh, sir, I'm not sure about that. Can you give us profile of uh, your province, KP KP Kaljur? Sir, what type? What is the political structure? What type of political governance is there? And then you can tell us about uh, what are merger and what are the implications. Sir, uh, politically, uh, we have seen that in KP, uh, this is the second time that the PTI government has been re-elected. So before that, no government. Uh, had the opportunity to serve twice in in the province so this is the first time that a government has been re-elected uh, in the uh, in 2013 and now in 20 uh, apart from that sir uh, overall uh, uh, kp has a, a, a rich cultural history as well because uh, it was at the crossroads of uh, central and south asia due to which we find uh, that uh, the gandharan civilization developed in this area and due to that uh, buddhism and hinduism had a strong presence in the region currently sir if we talk about uh, the fata merger sir so uh, it has been uh, welcomed by the political parties of kp obviously because they will get a greater number of one aspect one reason is that they will have a larger number of seats uh, in the uh, national assembly because the seats of fata will be merged into kp assembly uh, into the province of kp which will get a greater representation in the central government so uh, so there were certain spoilers uh, during the merger but i think they have been resolved to a great extent now and uh, the 25th amendment uh, was for the merger of fata with kp which is now in the process developmental <coughs> projects are being initiated in in fata um, and uh, so that's about it this present government they claim that they have made a lot of big breakthrough in tourism and then in uh, especially health system can you tell us what type of and then the police reforms tell us with reference to your own experience in the subdivision reform in the health sector and the police thana culture and tourism if there is any sir uh, i'll divide my answer into three parts uh, so firstly coming to the tourism sector uh, in my subdivision as i uh, mentioned before the major tourist attraction is the uh, takhbai monastery So for that, the government has initiated a plan at uh, the sea level, where we have formed committees with the which has representation of the assistant commissioner uh, and the local people of that area, 
basically to increase awareness about the uh, Takbai monastery uh, through media, local media and through uh, digital media as well. But overall, uh, if we talk about the province, the province of KP uh, has increased uh, tourism, um, uh, uh, the tourist potential in KP has increased uh, because of uh, the focus of the government on this area. Uh, the northern areas, uh, including uh, Nalt starting from Nartalbari and uh, Kumrat, Swat, Deer, Chitral, all of these regions. Uh, secondly, sir, uh, about the health and education. For the health department, sir, uh, a new innovative step that has been taken just now recently in my Tessil, uh, as you were asking about my Tessil, sir, is the health management committees. These health management committees, sir, have been formed at the level of the basic health units, the BHUs, which are present in the district, sir. The health management committee will be under the assistant commissioner. It will have two representatives from the health department, the local uh, uh, MS or and the, D, the DHO, sir, and two representatives from the local community. They will be uh, delegated a fund from the central, uh, from the provincial government. They will give them a fund for a whole one year and in that fund they will be responsible to manage that particular BHU, all the infrastructure requirements, etc. How many BHU have you have got in Takhpai? Right? Sir, 15 BHUs in Takhpai, sir. So, uh, so this is the latest step in the health department, sir. And in education, sir... Uh, now, what about this uh, health card? Is it functional there? Sir, a health card uh, in SAF card is functional. It is basically your ID card which serves as the health card, but it is not uh, available in most uh, hospitals. It is not, uh, for example, it's not available in Madan Medical Complex, which is the main hospital of Madan. Some hospitals accept it, but others do not. It is only functional in some of the hospitals. Well, how do you see this uh, impact of Afghan crisis? in your provinces, in your province especially? The Awan crisis, I believe that it hit the province of KP uh, most severely because of its geographical and uh, linguistic contiguity. Uh, we have Pathans predominantly residing in KP and in Afghanistan. So the current situation which is evolving in Afghanistan, if there is any impact, it will be on KP. The maximum impact will be on KP province. And for that, I believe that uh, the current government must make sure that uh, if we are improving ties with the Taliban government, that should be only to the extent of, uh, uh, that should be limited on a limited scale, ensuring that there is no uh, uh, migration of people into the province again, into KP. <coughs> because that can obviously affect the demographic or demographics of the uh, province and that will also have a burden on the existing sir, infrastructure, the civic facilities, the, the health facilities and that is obviously bound to create uh, a blowback here in, in KP province as well. How many union council you have got in your Tessie? Sir, uh, 52 in total Mardan sir. I am not uh, confirmed about Takhbai. When you are going for your lo local government election? Sir, they are in progress right now sir. What is happening? What is the stage? Mm, sir, uh, nomination papers are being filed right now. But sir, uh, I am not a part of uh, the lo elections. My duty has, uh, because I requested my deputy commissioner to exclude me from that so that I have some time available for the interview preparation. Then, <coughs> you tell me, what is globalization and what are the pros and cons the globalization is facing at the moment? So uh, globalization is uh, defined as the uh, deepening, strengthening and uh, uh, expansion of worldwide interconnectedness basically. Uh, the term global village uh, is derived from globalization which essentially means the increased interaction and the increased dilution, basically dilution of physical, cultural and social boundaries between states. Uh, referring to the pros and cons, obviously, sir, uh, the greatest con which we see right now is the uh, the integrated, the highly integrated economies in globalization, which uh, due to COVID uh, had a negative impact on all the worlds because the economy and the supply lines, they were integrated due to which uh, uh, all the countries suffered the impact of uh, COVID-19. Secondly, sir, the, uh, the positive of globalization, if you come to the positives of globalization, sir. What is happening now? You see there's a lot of literature on this issue that globalization, again, there is a movement 
especially from Trump era. They want to protect their own production and own industry and something like that. This is happening now. Sir, uh, it, it happened more uh, in the Trump era, basically uh, right-wing populism, right-wing na uh, nationalism that took uh, that was starting to take precedence over globalization. Uh, we had countries like the United States uh, leading the bloc and then some countries like Hungary and uh, other European states who were calling for greater, uh, basically calling for greater isolation because they believed that their interests were being uh, uh, somehow overrun by the impacts of globalization due to which we saw the US-China trade war that took place uh, between US and, uh, US and China and their withdrawal from Trans-Pacific Partnership, their withdrawal from the Climate Accord. So these were some of the aspects. But now since uh, Joe Biden has uh, come into power, he rejoined the Paris Agreement on the first day. He is renegotiating the JCPOA. Uh, although Chinese strategy remains mostly the same, but he has scaled down that anti-globalization rhetoric of uh, Donald Trump. Uh, but I believe that globalization is now in, uh, it's an irreversible process in the current uh, era and it will keep on increasing. Uh, it's not, uh, it cannot be ended. Thank you. How, how policies are formed uh, in our country and implemented. First, tell us about uh, about what is policy. Well, uh, policy is basically the uh, the vision of the government, which is uh, the government in power, which is uh, translated into action through the bureaucracy, uh, through the executive branch of the government. How policies are are formed? What is the process? What is the mechanism? And then and then implemented. Well, basically, uh, when a, a bill is tabled in the parliament, uh, that bill, uh, once it is given assent by, by the president, it becomes a law. No, that those no. laws. Before that, you see, there's a lot of work uh, which uh, is done in this regard. It's not uh, tabling of the bill in the parliament. Before that, a lot of effort, a lot of input has to be there. W what is that? So I'm sorry, I won't be able to answer this question. What are the components of a police station? Sir, uh, I've never actually been inside a police station till now, but uh, obviously there's the office of uh, the SHO, the detention cell, which we call Hawalat, and there's a record room. Uh, there's uh, a parking lot, which is usually used for impounding traffic vehicles or other uh, similar uh, items. Yeah, Malkhana? Malkhana, sir. What is the Ruzlamcha? In police, uh, it's a daily diary basically in which uh, the police records its uh, activities, important activities uh, or basically takes an initial report. If a complainant comes to a police station, the initial report is taken in the Ruzlamcha. No, that is uh, mentioned there, but everything <coughs> happening in the police station. Yes, sir. Even the chaining of the guards. Yes, sir. Who, uh, you see, who came, who went. And yes, sir, all important. Ev everything. How do you see the ongoing EVM row between the government and the opposition and the election commission? Obviously, the electronic voting machines do have the benefit of ensuring greater transparency. But I believe that the basic issue in this government has been that it has not followed the proper parliamentary procedure for introducing uh, bills. They have resorted to culture of ordinances, which happened before them as well. But uh, the issue is not regarding the electronic voting machine. It is more, I believe, has to do with the proper procedure that needs to be followed in a democracy. And the more greater responsibility is on the ruling government because they are in power. The proper procedure should be to uh, uh, go through the parliament instead of uh, implementing ordinances and not to uh, uh, blackmail or not to, uh, you can say, uh, tarnish the image of state institutions like the election commission. Because if you if you <coughs> tarnish the image of the state institution like the election commission, which is supposed to be neutral, then you are automatically paving the way for reducing uh, the credibility of democracy in the country. So I believe that this is the main. What are carbon sinks? Uh, carbon sinks are uh, your oceans and uh, the Arctic was the major carbon sink, but now uh, it used to uh, basically absorb maximum carbon, but now it is not because it's melting and our trees, oceans, 
uh, Arctic and Antarctic ice sheets. These are the carbon, major carbon sinks. And the forests also, rainforest. Forests are, yes, are trees and forests. Why, what's happening to rainforests? Instead of carbon sinks, they are, uh, they are emitting carbon. It is that the studies which I have uh, lately conducted. I believe a deforestation that is uh, happening, uh, that is a major reason that uh, the global forest cover is reducing. Uh, if you look at the previous studies, global forest cover is reducing due to which uh, the carbon sequestration or carbon absorption which those forests were doing, that is not happening right now. Well, what is Pakistan's nuclear doctrine? Well, I believe presently it's full spectrum deterrence. What does that mean? So that means that previously Pakistan did have a, had a no first use policy, which is now not in place. Ever since uh, the conventional and nuclear arms buildup of India in collaboration with US has started. So Pakistan is brought to full spectrum deterrence, which means that Pakistan will also acquire nuclear weapons with, and they can use it first okay. in case of weapon. That is one, one factor that is uh, Indo-US deal, American deal. and. What are there? There are some others also, something very important. I am unable to recall them, sir. Right now, I'll have you heard of the nuclear supplies group? Yes, sir. And is it's Pakistan a member of it? Uh, no, sir. Yeah. India is. Sir. India is member. Uh, it's not a member, but the U.S. has allowed India to purchase uh, uh, to carry out uh, trade in nuclear weapons. Yes, With exemption. Now, yes, sir. Exemption. Got, got, got exemption. So that is another. Yes, sir. Because sir, it will allow the US to divert its uh, civil uh, nuclear supplies. Mm. And uh, finally, uh, what was Camp David accord about? So, uh, about the recognition of Israel in 1978. So between, uh, between, uh, sir, in 1978 between uh, Egypt and uh, Israel. So it was brokered by uh, US President Jimmy Carter um, mm. and uh, in which... It was an accord between... Yes, sir. A, a, between, a peaceful agreement between yes, uh, Egypt and Israel. Yes, sir. Uh, which uh, uh, Egypt recognized Israel and uh, the Sinai Peninsula was returned to Egypt. What was Rikotik case about and how it ended? Sir, it was about uh, copper mines in, in Balochistan and uh, the previous government, I believe, under General Parvez Musharraf, they had uh, a deal with a foreign company, uh, <coughs> Tethian Copper Company, I believe, uh, for granting them mining rights. But when the new government came into power, they cancelled that lease, due to which the company... Uh, government cancelled the lease? Uh, who, who? The next government. Who decided? So the next... The, I believe the PPP government, they cancelled. It was uh, uh, by the Supreme Court, a decision. Okay. Yes. He did that on the basis of that. And okay. okay. Uh, Zain Ali, uh, you're interested in foreign service also? Uh, yes, ma'am. What do you know about the hierarchy of an embassy? An embassy, sir, uh, ma'am, uh, it's headed by the uh, ambassador and then the, um, I believe, there's the first, sec uh, first secretary, second secretary, third secretary, as we move downwards. And what is the difference between a high commissioner and an ambassador? Ma'am, a high commissioner uh, is appointed in those states which were, are part of the Commonwealth. And the ambassador is appointed in those states which are not part of the Commonwealth. So sometimes Pakistani ambassador is ambassador and sometimes is, is a high commissioner. Because sometimes you are in Commonwealth and sometimes you are not in Commonwealth. Uh, I believe so. Okay. Um, what is a birdie? In golf? Yes, ma'am. Um, it's uh, basically when you uh, one below par. Have you, have you done any good birdies? Uh, yes, a few, ma'am. My house is actually adjacent to the golf club. So, I've been playing there. So. Okay. Um, have you been following the newspaper? Uh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Do you know about the recent Sikh referendum in London? Do you know anything about the Khalistan movement? Uh, yes, ma'am. Do you share your thoughts? Um, it's uh, basically a, a, a nationalist movement that is uh, in which the Sikh diaspora community is involved 
around uh, around the world and the local Sikhs in in India, uh, basically wanting to create a state uh, by a Khalistan state comprising of the Sikh community. So uh, we saw that the assassination of uh, Ms. Indra Gandhi in 1984 by her own bodyguards was due to the reason that she was not in support. Uh, she ordered the Operation Blue Star uh, in 1984. So uh, that it's basically one of the nationalist movements which are taking place, like the Palestinian movement and the movement in Kashmir. So Khalistan movement is also another part of that. So what do you think they're going to do after the referendum? Now I'm, I'm sorry, I haven't followed that uh, referendum, so I cannot answer this. Have you been following COP26? Uh, yes, ma'am. Could you share your thoughts on the conclusion of COP26? Ma'am, um, the recent article which I read said that uh, four uh, agenda points uh, are basically involved in COP26. Uh, they are cash, cars, carbon and trees. Cash basically refers to the climate finance. Uh, they are saying that it is decided that $4 trillion are required annually if we want the world to go carbon neutral by 2050. So it has placed uh, a responsibility uh, on the developed states to provide $100 billion annually to developing countries. Uh, secondly, ma'am, cars is basically to move towards renewable energy resources, renewable uh, fuel. And thirdly, ma'am, uh, cash uh, uh, carbon is carbon uh, limitation and trees is <coughs> afforestation programs. So these were the four basic uh, points on which uh, the COP26 uh, was uh, it revolved around these four points. Thank you very much, Zain. Okay, Zain. Uh, let us talk about US history. Sir. On the one dollar bill, whose pictures is on the one dollar? Bill. Yeah, I believe George Washington. And on one hundred dollar bill, yeah, Benjamin Franklin. Sure. Uh, so as far as I've read, I believe it's Benjamin Franklin on the hundred. Okay, tell me where did the Declaration of Independence sign? In which states? In which states, sir? Uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, sir. Philadelphia or Pennsylvania? State of Pennsylvania, sir. City of state Philadelphia. Of? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, can you tell me the first ca U.S. capital? It was New York, first capital. First, yes, sir. capital of uh, the third. American colonies. Yes. Sir. Okay, tell me, uh, can you uh, define three types of U.S. colonies? With the names of yeah. Uh, uh, sir, uh, Virginia was the first. The types of American colonies. Then northern colonies, then middle colonies, proprietary colonies, and southern colonies. Yeah, this was proprietary colonies and southern colonies. Sir. Okay. What did you know about the Burr's conspiracy? Burr's, uh, sir, it was, I believe, uh, when it happened. I'm not sure, but he was, uh, he uh, basically wasn't elected as the vice, he was in the election for the vice president, but he wasn't elected <coughs> before, at the time of uh, Thomas Jefferson, I think. Okay, uh, you have good feeling. Yes, is a time period associated with the uh, president of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Name the president. Sir James Monroe. James Monroe. Yes, sir. Good feeling. Okay, uh, who was the founder of Democratic Party? Uh, the Democratic Party. Democratic Party. Sir, uh, Andrew Jackson, sir. Andrew Jackson. And uh, Sir Martin Van Buren. Okay, and who was the founder of Republican Party? Well, uh, Edmund Lincoln. Edmund Lincoln, there was no Republican Party before that? Uh, no, sir, it was actually... Later. Later. Okay, which one is the uh, Conservative Party? In these two, sir. Yeah, sir, the Republican Party. It's a Conservative? It yes. belongs to Tories or Whigs? Whigs, sir. Whigs? Okay, uh, Federalist and Anti-Federalist. There was a debate about the constitutional approval. Uh, what anti-federalists wanted? What sort of constitution they demanded? Uh, basically, they wanted a federal state in which the individual states or the provinces should have more powers as compared to the central government. And the federalists wanted a strong central government as compared to the provinces. Sir. And also, sir, the anti-federalists wanted representation, equal representation in both houses and uh, 
in the, they wanted a single house with equal representation and the federalists wanted uh, two houses both on uh, proportional representation so then a uh, compromise was reached known as the Connecticut Compromise in which two bicameralism was introduced in which the lower house was based on equal representation and the upper house on proportional representation. But we read US history. During the progressive era, can you name some of the very important captains of industry? Yes, sir, uh, J.D. Rockefeller and um, I cannot, I, I've read it, I cannot recall it right now, sir. Okay. Uh, Woodrow Wilson belongs to which political party? He uh, was a Democrat. Democrat? Yes. And John F. Kennedy? He was a Repub Republican. Sir. Jimmy Carter? Jimmy Carter was a Democrat, sir. Who was the president of the United States of America when USSR invaded Afghanistan? Sir, Jimmy Carter. Sure. Yes, in 79. Uh, yes, sir. So after the John F. Kennedy, who was the president? So, 64. Sir Dwight Eisenhower. Uh, no, sir. I'm sorry. Okay, let's talk about Pakistan studies. Okay, one for the first time, Muslim demand of separate electorate incorporated in constitutional reforms. In uh, 1909, in the more elemental reforms. Into more reforms. The Khno Pact was an agreement between Indian National Congress and All India Muslim League. This agreement was conceived by a governor general. Can you name that governor general? Okay. 1919 uh, reforms the reforms ka naam kya tha? For, uh, yes, Montague was the governor general who conceived the agreement. Oh. Okay. Okay, can you tell me the name uh, who negotiated on behalf of Indian National Congress with the cabinet mission? Uh, sir, uh, uh, Nehru, I believe. Nehru? Nehru, yes, sir. Cabinet mission. Yes, Abul Kalam Azad. Abul Kalam, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. दो 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 रुपए में घंटा YouTube लगा अपनी दुनिया में खोके ये दुनिया को Zong 4G और YouTube एक बार फिर लाया YouTube ऑफर सिर्फ दो रुपए में पूरा एक घंटा YouTube डाल स्टार 1987 हैश एंड लेट्स गेट डिजिटल विद Zong 4G Okay, let's conclude it. Let's conclude the final uh, this forum interview. Let's be, try to have a. What do you say? What, what is your? What do you think about your performance? Sir, it could have been uh, better. It but, could have been better. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, actually, I haven't <coughs> had that much time to revise, uh, especially my options because I have a full time. I'm working full time. So, uh, but my interview is in January, so I'm hoping that I can cover those up uh, before the final attempt. You know, then your stakes are higher. Sir. Do you know that? Yes, sir. Because you are already in the promotional service. So, it's also a ladder. Yes, sir. Ladder promotion is fine. Sir. There is no issue so much. Okay. But today I feel, today at the moment, that your state is prepared. Yes, sir. You have not come to the war. Yes, sir. So, luckily you have got time. So you need to work hard. Yes. But like, ab thik ho. You are original, be ho, critical, be ho, objectivity be hai aap mein. You have got a good personality. Introduction be aap ka thik hai. Intelligent hai. Communication skills are fine. Aapki body language thik hai. Aapki ke oral be thik hai. Ab wo thoda sa jo nazar aaye mujhe wo yeh yeh ke knowledge gap. जनरलाइज तो आप चीजों को कर लेते हैं लेकिन स्पेशल जिस तरह होते हैं वो पर नहीं कर सकते तो आजकल वो ट्रेंड है कि वो टोकन क्वेश्चन पूछ रहा है ठीक है ना तो नो यू नीड टू ब्रिंग योर सेल्फ इन स्टेट ऑफ प्रिपेयर्डेस मीनिंग बाय कि किस तरह करना है न्यूज़पेपर को कर रहे होंगे तीन महीने का गुजर नेशनल इंटरनेशनल एंड सोशल इश्यूज ठीक है और अपनी नोट नोटबुक बनाई हुई है कोई इंटरव्यू जी सर वो तो सॉफ्ट में भी नोट्स बना रहा हूँ सर जी उसको भी बनाओ हर पेज पे लिखो वन टू थ्री फोर पॉइंट स्पोकन इंटरव्यू जो होता है ना उसमें फिर सारा फोकस होता है कि आपने दो तीन बातें करनी है जी सर ठीक है दिस इज अ टू वीक कम्युनिकेशन जी सर अब यू आर इन आपका तुम्हारा यहाँ से स्टार्ट भी यहाँ से होगा जहाँ तुम हो जी सर तो यू हैव यू आर ऑलरेडी एक्सपीरियंस फॉर देम तो वो अब तुमसे तुम्हारी हॉबीज के बारे में इतना वरी नहीं करेंगे दे विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम अ सिस्टम के मुझे थाने को समझो 
किसी को जाके विजिट करके देख रहा हूँ पुलिस ऑर्डर तुम्हें पता हो डिस्ट्रिक्ट कलेक्टर के फंक्शन क्या है डिस्ट्रिक्ट में मैजिस्ट्रेट क्या था डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोऑर्डिनेशन में क्या है लोकल गवर्नमेंट के तहत लोकल रेवोल्यूशन क्या है मतलब तुम्हारी कंसेप्शन अंडरस्टैंडिंग इन चीजों के लिए क्लियर होनी चाहिए यू आर ऑलरेडी गोइंग फॉर ए लोकल गवर्नमेंट इलेक्शन तो ये मेरे ख्याल में थोड़ा सा नॉलेज गैप का इश्यू हम देख रहे हैं ठीक है ना यू नीड टू लकली यू हैव गॉट टाइम एंड यू नीड टू वर्क हार्ड तुम अभी किस तरह देखो ना तुम वो बीस सौ तेरह में तुम्हारी ग्रेजुएशन हुई और बीस सौ उन्नीस में तुमने ज्वाइन किया जी सर ठीक है ना अब तुम बीस सौ तेरह से यहाँ से फिर इट विल बी ए न्यू स्टार्ट जी सर तो सात साल आठ साल का तो गैप के साथ जब स्टार्ट करोगे तो फिर तो इतनी दूसरे डिपार्टमेंट्स में मजा नहीं आएगा तुम जी सर तो इसलिए मेरा ख्याल है कि थोड़ी सी मेहनत कर लो जी सर यू नीड टू वर्क हार्ड आप सर ये देखिए पॉलिसी तो ये जो है फॉर्मुलेशन उसकी इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ये बेसिक चीज है आपको पता होनी चाहिए ये पॉलिसीज कैसे कैसे बनती है यार ये क्यों ये 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 तो बात ठीक नहीं है आप सर्विस में हैं जी सर बिजनेस में हैं जी सर जिसका ताल्लुक है जो है ये ये जो है इसको जाकर देखें और देखने की जरूरत क्या यू शुड नो ये तो इट्स नॉट समथिंग वेरी बाकी जो है जैसे कहा आपका नॉलेज गैप है और योर कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स दे आर वेरी गुड लेकिन यू नीड टू वर्क आउट ठीक है इसको ट्राई टू बिल्ड ऑन इट ठीक है जैसे कहा कोशिश करें मेहनत करें जैन यू हैव अ गुड पर्सनैलिटी यू आर एन इंटेलिजेंट बॉय एंड इट सीम्स दैट यू आर हार्ड वर्किंग सिर्फ ये जो नॉलेज गैप है बिकॉज यू आर वर्किंग वो डू फिल इट अप बिफोर द एग्जाम अदरवाइज इट्स गुड थोड़ा सा नॉलेज गैप फिल अप कर लो आई एम कॉन्फिडेंट यू डू वेरी वेल थैंक यू ऑब्जेक्टिव टाइप के क्वेश्चंस जो हैं उनको थोड़ा सा देख लें अभी आईआर के क्वेश्चंस मैंने आपसे नहीं किए अगर वो चीजें पूछता तो आपको डॉक्टर इन जो उन सब चीजों को जी सर या जो थ्योरिस्ट थे उनके बारे में 